I don't. There, I don't think if you went around the world and you you kind of interviewed people that a lot, a very high percentage would consciously say that they really want to live in community. Um, you know, there's there's your hermits and your you know I am a rock, I am an island. There's the people that kind of enjoy being single and going solo, and then there are those that want to pair off and couple up. And, uh, but there's not really that many that, that would, that are like open to spiritual community. And then, if there is a sense of community, I, I know I've watched people over the years and just kind of observed, is that people like to have a kind of a cause or a purpose to rally around. And it, this purpose isn't exactly always healing the mind. You know, food co-op. I'll join a food co-op. We'll save money. Buying food together, you know, or we'll we'll go and we'll invest together in some kind of venture or this and that. I mean, those are the common kind of things where people join together on some kind of external goal, you know, where it seems safer, you know, to have a more superficial goal to join in and then the more you work with metaphysics and with the Course, then it's like, uh oh, that's not going to go anywhere. You know, those those are like backdrops to come together, but I think the deeper you go spiritually, that you're not so concerned about joining so much with family, with relatives, with high school reunions, and the things that you think, my gosh, I've had story after story of trying to join around these more superficial causes and it never brought me a deep sense of satisfaction and joy and peace. And it's like, it feels a little crazy though to, to let it all go. People will say, what are you doing? Well, what are you going to do with your life? You gotta, you gotta have friends, you gotta have family, you gotta, you've got to belong. You've got to find out where to belong and this path is, is really, you know, following the path of a, of a different drummer, you know, of, of taking you on the road less traveled. And it's almost a guarantee that you'll face feelings of loneliness and aloneness coming up on this journey. And I think that's just what Lisa was saying. It's like it's facing them. You know, it, it can seem to serve to a point and then all of a sudden it's like, I don't want to just tell myself, you know, I'm not alone. I, I want to feel that connectedness. And and I think it takes a lot of faith and trust to really go down this rabbit hole or down this journey of purpose, true divine purpose. That's what I thought I was needing to work on was the trust. I thought that maybe that's what it was, what I was feeling was giving in and just trusting. Yeah, I think, and this this monastery is a reflection of that. I've described it as like a, just like they talk about a house of cards, this is like a, just a, a pyramid of trust that just every little, every little stick in the pyramid is, is based on trust. And if there wasn't that trust, it seems like the whole pyramid would collapse. And it just, from every aspect of what we do, it's, it's based on that trust. Uh, it's like a vibrational connection where that's, we put that so much out in front that, that the other things that the world would consider important just start to fade away, fall away. And even when people come and share their experiences and their stories, there's always that common, the common ground of, of mind training, you know, using it for mind training, using everything for mind training, everything without exception, and it's it's fun. I mean, it's it's not so heavily reinforced in the world, you know, where you know it's kind of unknown. It's kind of it's not even a consciously talked about mind training. What is that? Is it some kind of brainwashing? Is it some kind of cult of control or whatever? And we're being taught to to cleanse the mind and and to tune in and to align and like calibrate, like you said, that we're, we're calibrating back into alignment with Spirit. We're doing it consciously, we're, we're doing it, reminding ourselves over and over to do it and do it. 
and we're actually allowing ourselves to feel some joy with it and feel like it can be fun. It actually can be fun. So. Thank you for coming. what I'm afraid of. Trust. Already you've, you've zoomed in. <laughs> the opening welcome, and you've zoomed into it. Yeah. And of course, miracles is really saying is trust or faith really aren't a matter of quantity. You know how sometimes people will say you need more faith or more trust. It's not really that at all. It's that you might say as our mind itself, we could say is is trusting, and it's more the question of what am I trusting in, or what am I putting my faith in? Because we're told there's two different thought systems, one of love and fear, and we're really trusting. Our mind is just always trusting. Uh, just like a, you see a little child, a child is can be very trusting, but but it's like what what am I trusting in? And that takes quite a bit of discernment. If, it, if our mind seems kind of muddled and confused, or like it seems like there's many voices going on in there, then what, of all these nine voices, the committee meets and they're all chattering at the same time. And <laughs> trust who? You know, trust the committee? You know, and so that one voice idea, you know, it's when you start working with the Course, it does seem like things start to get quieter, settle down, settle down. And you may not tune in completely to that one voice initially, but you, you sure feel like you're on the right direction. Like it starts to get softer and and more still and more quiet. And it's like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm heading in the right direction. Maybe that's all I have to do, is just head in that direction. Maybe I don't have to figure out how it's gonna how I'm gonna get there. Maybe there's this great power within me that that is really uh, a very good guide at, at getting me there into that experience and so I'm glad that you, you came. <laughs>